Hey everyone, Bob WP here, and welcome to Woo Biz Chat, the Do the Woo podcast show. Woo! Woo! Woo Biz Chat is sponsored by OmniSend. OmniSend is a solution for email on SMS marketing with their CRM solution for WooCommerce shops or your own website while saving time with pre built automation that drives sales. And Air Wallets. The online payment plugin allows you or your clients to localize your WooCommerce store checkout experience by enabling customers to pay with preferred currencies and payment methods. I'll tell you more about our sponsors later in the show, but let's dive into another WooBiz chat. Hey everyone, this is Adam Weeks from WooBiz Chat. Unfortunately, I am not jo- joined by my lovely co-host, Emma Young. She is out of town, busy doing all kinds of stuff, jet-setting around the world. So you are stuck with me as your host, but good news for you. I have a really exciting guest today, uh, Scott Stapley. He is uh, founder at... Um, Big Scoots. You may not have heard of them before, but they've been around for for quite a while. And instead of me just uh, telling about them, hey Scott, uh, welcome. <laughs> it's good to, good to meet you. Good morning. Yeah, good to meet you too, Adam. Thanks so much. Pleasure to be here, uh, Scott uh, Stapley, CEO, co-founder of Big Scoots. Fifteen years now, so it's uh, it's been a minute. Exciting though. Very exciting. Yeah. I'm sure t- time flies when you're having fun. Oh, you, yeah. You tell me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, uh, in all transparency, this is kind of the, the first time we're, we're getting to, to meet each other, although I have met some of the, the people you, you work with, and uh, I met at, uh, at CloudFest US, and one of the things that really stood out to me when I was getting to know more about Big Scoots and, and what you guys do was customer service or client service, I think is more specifically. We're going to get into some of the, the nuances of, of that. And so that's what this episode is about. That we, we call this the, the hook. We're hooking people in. If people are curious and want to know more about customer service, client service, best in class, what should we do? We're going to get into some of the interesting uh, elements of... Um, best practices is it worth it is it worth the investment when when is it not and i think people are really gonna t- get some really solid takeaways from this but before we get into that and some of those takeaways yeah just kind of give us a, a quick introduction where are you at on this big planet and uh yeah a little bit more about yourself yeah, thanks again, Adam. Looking forward to digging into all the nit, nit and gritty. Um, me, myself, um, I, uh, I live a, uh, a small life these days in uh, Connecticut, just outside of New York. Um, in a previous life, I did a lot of traveling, had the opportunity to live overseas for quite a while with my wife, uh, kind of followed her around in her, uh, in her ventures. But uh, Big Scoots has been a labor of love for a very long time. It's afforded me the opportunity to uh, work remotely and, and just kind of uh, deal with the odd uh, business trip. Um, so I've had the opportunity to really kind of explore the world. Uh, in uh, my younger years, I, I went to school for uh, cell and molecular biology of all things. Mm. Um, not all too applicable these days, uh, <laughs> but it was a was a fun adventure at the time. Um, but it's been, uh, you know, you talk about a career path and sort of a journey to get here. It's just been, you know, you talk a little bit about kind of the topic being, you know, customer service. We classify it as uh, Customer success. Um, we we think there's a lot that encompasses customer service, and it's more than just um, the client, uh, you know, specialist, the account manager, or the uh, the sales representative, or whoever might typically fall within that usual role. Um, and we've really kind of had the opportunity to spend the better part of those 15 years really kind of focusing in on that. So that's been my adventure and my 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 goal for that entire period of time is is to build a business and a service around. A very high level of customer success. So, um, yeah, that's that's me. That's me in a nutshell. Yeah, very very cool. Yeah, like that, that's that's a great intro, and I really appreciate getting that background. Uh, one of the things I love about the you know do the woo community WordPress is it's just chock filled with interesting people with just backgrounds that you wouldn't have expected. Oh, molecular biology, sure. WordPress, absolutely. Let's let's put those together. Uh, we all have interesting interesting paths. Uh, 
so let's let's jump right in to customer success from a high level. What is how would you define it? What is uh, customer uh, success? What does that look like? From well, let's start from from your perspective. What does that look like? <clears throat> yeah, and I think my perspective um, as a uh, as a business owner, you know, might have a few facets um, that are perhaps a little bit different. <laughs> depending on the business that you you might be looking at it from uh, for example you know we have metrics these days right we have customer churn and revenue retention and these sorts of things and you can measure client success in a certain type of way but it's not all too palpable and i find having your finger on the pulse ear to the ground uh you know finger in the air whichever one you'd like um <laughs> is really the best way to understand you know, the ebbs and flows of your business and make sure that you're doing things right if your goal is to deliver on your customer success goals. <clears throat> and in my case, for example, that, that means um, a lot of, um, you know, inbound leads, you know, a lot of, I'm, I'm spending a lot of my day on, on chats and, and, and sales tickets and just making sure that I understand, you know, where, what the customers are, are needing and how we can be doing better. Um, you know, I wrote a small bio on my LinkedIn, like, you know, ten years ago, about you know my job being understand what we do well and what we can do better, and I'd say that you know that's still eighty, ninety percent of my day. Um, naturally, the business still needs to be ran, so there's a huge portion of of my day being spent elsewhere these days. But really understanding, you know, with boots on the ground in the weeds, so to speak. I mean, that's the words that I like to use most regularly. Um, what is actually happening? You know, what are those first words coming out of your sales teams? Uh, fingers, I guess. Um, you know, what? How are people being, being greeted? Is it is it done so in a in a manner that um, you know hits hits your ultimate customer success goals? And uh, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes an army. It takes a team. It takes a village to really um, do that at every corner. Especially when you're such a high touch business like a hosting provider, where you know you're effectively a problem dump. You know, people effectively only reach out to you when there's an issue. So making sure that you have the right frame. Of mind and and all of the information that you could possibly have available to you to address issues, whether it be billing or support related, um, is incredibly important. So building tools, proactive measures, you know, really training our team, finding the right people. You know, there's so much that goes into it. Um, but in the weeds is is ab- staying in the weeds, no matter how busy you get, is uh, is 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 ec- extremely critical. Awesome. What do you feel like? Why is it worth it to invest in in customer service? If someone was saying, "Hey, we live in an age of you know, AI is 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 a is a big deal now," or uh, we can just have lots of help articles, uh, these are smart people; they'll figure it out. Why sell me on s- investing in customer service? Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, uh, you know, this this could be a whole. You know, this could be a whole you know, multi-hour, you know, sure. talk in itself. Um, but it's, I mean, it's ultimately what we chose to differentiate on. So it, it's ultimately the, the core of our business. You know, why does our business, why is our business successful in a otherwise uh, contracting market? You know, there's a lot of other hosting providers who are, you know, really, really contracting in really significant ways. And uh, we're not. We're, we're fortunate and lucky enough to be going in the opposite direction. And I think the core reason is, is what you just mentioned, is our investment in, in customer success and our ability to sort of deliver on that. And it's not something that happened overnight. I mean, it, it's, you, know, you have to do it every day. You have to iterate 100 times a week. And you have to spend many, many years you know, trying to perfect the client customer success lifecycle because it's just so hard to do consistently every time. But if you do get it right... I mean, you're correct. We live in a world of, of AI and automation, and, and I think that's exactly the reason why customer success is so important these days in client, client service, because how many times have you had a you know, random issue with whatever personal you know, instrument or device or technology or whatever, you know, whether it be your phone or your internet or what have you, you reach out to the team, you get a bot you know, in off hours, we'll get back to you in four days, here's my email, um, you, know, you may or may not get responded to. Like, that's just... That's just, in, in my view, that is that's incredibly disappointing. If I have a problem, I would very much like somebody to hear me. I would love to be heard. I would love to know that somebody takes ownership over that problem. And I would love for that person to actually be there, present, speaking to me, and making sure that they understand the problem fully. 
And that's what we deliver on is, is somebody, you know, right now you could open up our chat or this could be four o'clock in the morning on Christmas Eve and you could speak to somebody. Somebody would answer you within 60 seconds most typically and they would listen to you, they would hear your problem and they would aim to address it uh, as, as quickly and as urgently as, as possible. And it, there's, there's just a, a freeing experience um, in my view when, when you have that type of customer success or customer uh, interaction uh, from the customer side. I mean, um, if you interact with a business and that business, you, you know, you feel heard and you feel validated and you feel that your problem is actually going to be addressed and done so quickly. Um, that just that just changes changes everything, you know, as far as how you look at a business. And I think in a world where everything is, you know, guide based and AI written and and you know uh, other hosts because they are contracting or maybe pushing margins in certain forms and fashions. Certainly not all hosts, but it is a it is a difficult world right now, especially in our ecosystem. Um, and and investing in customer success, I, there's a, there's a very large burden there from the from the host to take on as far as training and hiring and and you know maintaining tools and you know, informing your support reps and, and sort of having that level of availability. So if you can deliver on that, my opinion, and I think we've seen that in, in our, you know, in our business sort of life cycle is that people really, 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 <laughs> you know, grab onto that and effectively never leave um, because, the, you know, it's, it's difficult to find that level of attention elsewhere. And we're not perfect, but we do care. We care a lot. And People know that, and I think there's huge value in it for any industry, hosting or otherwise. Interesting. Okay, great. All right, <clears throat> you sold me. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a <laughs> small business owner in in, in WooCommerce and in, in WordPress, and yep, I believe that I need to do to invest in you know customer success. Where do I start? Like, how do I get this going? Like, I, I may not have, I don't have infinite resources. And if you were to, to take that use case, uh, where do you start? And then how do you build that out? In our own world, I mean, hosting, I don't know, is all too different from a WooCommerce platform in the sense that, you know, there are still certain metrics and, and numbers and, and, you know, values that we need to hit. Um, Internally, you know, we we were a bootstrap business. You know, we started from you know the the typical you know here's twenty dollars you know and then it turns into a server and then the server turns into two servers and you know fifteen you know years later we have our own data center footprint. But um, we we very much were our bootstrapped you know homegrown you know uh, you know invest the proceeds into growing you know type of type of model. And um, I think <clears throat> you know the difficulty for us and I think you know maybe what you're kind of getting at. Is that there's a point in time where it can't just necessarily be be you as the founder, or if it is, you need to figure out, you know, is your time best spent here or is it best spent elsewhere? I was very fortunate enough to have a you know an amazing technical founder. So, you know, my business partner and I, we had a an immediate sort of splitting of responsibilities and and you know, I would attribute the great amount of success to that. You know, I was able to focus on the business. And sales and all the things you know in that respect, and my business partner Justin, he was able to focus on all of the technical needs of our of our platform effectively. So, you know that really influenced quite a lot. So, a little bit of help, you know, say the say to say the least, um, would be very helpful um, with respect to you know just understanding you know where your priorities lay and, and being able to focus on these sorts of things. Um, but you do have to invest in it. There's no question about it, and there's no immediate return either. In our case, you know, we had to really, really, really look long term. You know, we had a lot of, you know, really kind of, you know, early conversations around, you know, okay, there's, you know, this race to bottom budget market, you know, if we bring on 100 customers next week for a dollar, you know, what's that going to do to us three years from now, you know, we have to support these folks. And I think there's, there's, there's just, you know, there's, there's a business planning element to it, there's good collaboration amongst your team, and, and there just needs to be a priority focus, um, you know, where you invest and how you invest is going to differ depending on your industry and your you know, your location and everything else. In our case, it was invest in team as much as possible, you know, create tools and as many monitoring tools as possible so we could influence our team members to be more efficient. So in our case, for example, as a host, you know, we proactively monitor all of our websites. It's something unique to Big Scoot. So if your website has a problem, whether it be a resource issue, an outage, what have you, we actually know about it um, and we react to it. So that dramatically reduces the amount of inbound because we're reaching out to you and fixing issues, you know, before you would otherwise reach back out to us. That, for example, is a, you know, keystone in, in the way that we've been able to sort of influence our support team and our customer success model because we've just been able to really um, scale 
service in a way that service is typically unscalable. So I think you need to you know, look at your space. How do you invest in it? I mean, it, it certainly depends on the, the particular ecosystem, but um, having hosted a great number of WooCommerce uh, sites over many years, um, you know, e-commerce sites and, and the like, we can certainly identify many folks that um, have rolled out that sort of platform where you know, they, have a, they have a product, they have a service offering, whatever it might be, and they pivot more towards the service route of their business and they see growth because of it. And I think they do it in a number of different ways, but you know, this is, this is my story. So I'm sharing how I, how I delivered on it, but it's, um, I think it's, I think we're in a world where customer success and customer service is, is just so, so valuable. So whatever you, whatever you can, I I think your dollars are are just amplified so much more than iterating on product or offering more larger inventory. Like these things are great and they're necessary for business, but you know the things that really get people coming back, in my view, is is a great experience with a brand or with a business, and you know that that typically starts and ends with um, customer success, or at least it does in, in our in our world. So, like, yep, let's say we're just getting started, and we're we're going to invest in this. Uh, it's grown beyond you as as the founder, so you have a couple of options. I know that there are companies that you can hire that have a call center and you just contract with them and they'll take care of you. And that's not what you've chosen to do, I don't believe. Um, How do you hire for this? How do you staff something like this? Because um, that first person, you know, that's a big investment and you don't want to get it wrong. What things have you done that maybe you feel are unique that have made your focus on client success to be successful? Yeah, no, it's, it's good question. I mean, it's, it's, you know, everybody's business is obviously different. I I would say, um, you know, your first hire, probably no matter what business you're in. Um, although I suppose some don't, don't qualify for this, but in most cases, or at least in our case, for sure, your first hire relative to your size of business is always going to be your largest expense in in almost any you know business life cycle like the ability to bring on an individual to spend a full time effort on on your business and your business alone and ha- you know and then kind of the uh you know putting yourself in that frame of mind of you know you're taking somebody away potentially from another business or you're bringing them into yours and you know you're doing that in a full time it, it's 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 as a business owner and an entrepreneur it's kind of it's kind of exciting and, and scary and like it's you know you're, you're bringing somebody in you're putting all this money forward you don't know if it's going to work and there's no immediate returns on that person either i mean that person is is you know servicing customers they're you know handling support tickets they're doing whatever it is you might need them to be doing but the idea of you know what what is their amplification you know within your business it's a, it's a scary thought you know when is the right time i mean frankly as soon as you can afford it, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, we were in a position where, um, you know, we were in college at the time. I mean, we, you know, to kind of, amp- you know, kind of add on to my story a little bit further. I mean, we used, you know, student loans to like support ourselves while we like built the business and then we, we did the whole thing, right? We really invested in ourselves. So um, at that time, that's when we actually brought on somebody is, 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 you know, really early on. So we weren't paying ourselves. We were actually paying our employee. Um, at the time, we had one employee um, still with us, by the way. It's amazing to have them here with us as long as they have. But um, that is, um, you know, it, it, if, if you can afford to bring somebody on to support you, um, you most definitely should um, because that is going to really amplify and, and improve your brand image in many more ways than, than you think they will by their direct work product, but also through just, you know, the, the you know the random comments the the extra catch at you know in an off hour where you may have otherwise been <clears throat> grabbing a sandwich I mean just just it, it is it is so easy to see the amplification of of a great team you know once you have them sort of in your fold and you're talking to them you're having team meetings you know you're seeing all the great ideas that they have after they've seen your clients and after they've seen your product and it's it's just amazing to see the acceleration that you get once you start building an amazing team around you and um, you know the earlier you can do that the better. Now, in terms of you know call centers and third party support and these sorts of things, I mean, <clears throat> there's certainly a business model where that works. I mean, if we take a look around at you know most of our <clears throat> you know billion dollar competitors, I mean they've they've created an entire 
um, you know, conglomerates around, you know, these types of services and they're able to drive pricing because of it, you know, so there's, there's a winning scenario there for a lot of end users. However, there is just going to be a lack of ownership and a lack of care and concern that those individuals are going to have because they don't live and breathe your product in the same way that an internal team member might. So it's always going to cost you, you know, three, four, five as much times as much to bring somebody internal to you. But in my case, for example, we've had that person for over a decade and that same person has become an extraordinarily key member of our team has influenced so many decisions. And, um, you know, I mean, that's just one example. I mean, every team member has their own influence in our, in our team, but bringing that person on as early as possible has, has just allowed us to make more better decisions more often than we otherwise could have by ourselves. Having a call center, you know, you're not going to get that same type of experience. So that's our position, but certainly there's many, yeah, it, it does go to the the thing that at the end of the day, it's about people and investing in people makes all the difference. Finding the right people for your team. Whether you're a product or a site builder, OmniSend can help you with your customer or client's email and SMS through their CRM solution for WooCommerce. Product builders can bring their plugins and SaaS to a new level for their customers by integrating with OmniSend. And for you developers and agencies, recommending them to your clients for managing their customer relationships is spot on because it gives them the right tool to build their email and SMS lists, send targeted campaigns, create automation workflows, and track their results, all from within their WordPress dashboard. With over 100,000 e-commerce stores, already on board. Have your clients and your customers get started for free by simply having them search for the OmniSend plugin on WordPress.org. The AirWallex online payments plugin allows you to localize you or your clients WooCommerce store checkout experience so any size business is able to grow without borders. Setup takes minutes and you'll find improved checkout conversion rates by offering Apple Pay, Google Pay, and 60-plus local payment methods. And since customers are not redirected to a different checkout page, that info is saved, and you can offer recurring payments with WooCommerce subscriptions. What really stands out with AirWallet is merchants are not forced to convert foreign incoming payments to their home market currencies And those funds can be used to pay suppliers internationally. So, literally, you save money all around. It's all there at airwallets.com. When you're looking for people who are going to fill that customer, that client success role, um, are there any specific attributes that you're looking for? Uh, Is it technical? Is it, ah, they're, (laughs) they seem nice. Like, what is it uh, that you're looking for? Yeah, a little of both, but uh, no, I mean, it's, I mean, you need a good culture fit, most certainly. Um, you know, I think, I mean, our team is, 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 is large enough these days that you're always going to find, you know, great partnership, great collaboration with other team members around you. Um, the, the, the key that we've found really for bringing people on, you know, everybody's human at the end of the day, and, and the more welcoming and the more collaborative and the more approachable you are as a business owner, um, and as a, as, a, as, a, as a team who's onboarding that individual, I find the, the larger chance of success that that person gets acclimated and, and just you know, loves their position and, and really gets on board with the company. And I think just sort of that human nature of, of, of really being welcoming and offering that person uh, you know, the opportunity that you would otherwise want to be offered if, if given that same, same you know, kind of turn of, turn of tables um, just influences that chance of success much, much, much more. So we have... You know, when we're looking for new new hires, we really look for somebody who's who's eager and motivated to get into something new, something that they might not have seen before. Because that that is ultimately the type of service we offer. We offer something different. We offer this really high touch, really hand holding. You know, we call it site specific management, where we're actually logging into the WordPress platform. We're influencing actually plugin changes and and updates and you know stuck PHP processes and all the rest of it. And you really need somebody who's motivated and eager to take those extra steps. You know, somebody reaches out to you with a problem, 
maybe they can't log into their email, something a little bit more basic, take that opportunity or take that touch point and that opportunity upon you to also, let's take a look around, let's make sure their caching is enabled properly, let's make sure there's no security concerns or an out-of-date plugin or something that we could otherwise do more for them. And that person doesn't necessarily need any additional technical expertise to be able to do that, but if they are eager and if they are motivated, that's, that's where you really start to see you know, that winning combination. So when we look for individuals, we certainly need the WordPress technical expertise and Linux system administration as well. I mean, those are the kind of keynotes of what we do here. Um, however, we can train to a senior capacity um, because we have so much team collaboration and ultimately it's called a deep bench. Uh, we don't have an influx of unreplied to tickets. We don't have this scenario where we don't have time to spend with new new onboards. So we can really spend the time and effort to train from a technical perspective. What we can't do is get somebody excited about customer success, customer service in the same way that they might otherwise bring to the table. So um, that's you know that, that's what we're looking. I mean, that's kind of a in a certain respect a non-answer. But we really you know it's hard to it's hard to define that too. Like a, res, a resume doesn't necessarily do it. In interviews, sometimes it's difficult to to really perceive. But if if you can get the energy out of that individual, I mean that's that's worth everything, um, regardless of their their technical position. Yeah. So, you know, from the, thank you, from the, from the client perspective, you know, I've got a problem, uh, something's not working, I don't understand, and so I'm going to reach out and I want this problem fixed. I'm looking for a person, I'm looking for someone who's going to fix it quickly, um, but I'm not necessarily looking to, you know, make a best friend, I, I just need this thing fixed, my business is in jeopardy, it's, it's late at night, I'm struggling over it. Uh, what are maybe some of the types of things you do? Uh, are there any investments? Or are there any tools that you're using that may be unique that can help a customer get their problem solved quicker? And I'll even throw out some words like, is, is AI, is there some tool there that might make it faster? You're still dealing with a person, but, or what types of things that are you investing in to make that experience? Or is it just no, this person is is good and can answer your question. Like any special tools, or just curious about that. Yeah, so you know, not to not to fire too many people up here, but AI is is not smart enough to um, identify human problems and uh, website issues to to the extent that um, they they need to be. I mean, there's there's multiple variables. There's there's a server level, there's a site level, there's a network level. You, know, you start using edge components, you start using you know object caching, you start using you know site page you know page caching. You you know what you know cache excluding. Like there's so many elements to this that 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 AI cannot really influence to to that extent. What AI can be used for? I mean, just to kind of specifically you know kind of note on the AI conversation is it it, it can it can digest it can digest data and and spit out some some great. Results. So, in our case, the way that we're leveraging AI, for example, is in a similar capacity to what you had just mentioned. So, we we have what I would distinguish as 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 just support gold, like a golden bank of support tickets. We have over a million fully answered, completed support tickets, and every single one of those has an extensive amount of detail and a lot of cases very unique attributes to each. So, being able to digest that amount of data and spit out some key results uh, related to a potential issue, all on the admin side, just to influence the atom, create a support efficiency, create tools, understanding those you know, custom scripts, custom excludes, you know, regex, like w- whatever the case might be, we've probably seen it before, and AI can help accelerate support responses by just having a database that they can ultimately freely and, and very um, flex- flexible, like a very flexible search. Um, that's really kind of full stop as far as AI is concerned on our end. We feel very strongly that everything else needs to come from a human. Um, however, tools can influence them. So AI is, is a tool the way that we see it. Uh, I mentioned proactive monitoring being a key note. So for example, if you reach out to us, we would have identified, you know, we, we could slow chase the PHP logs. We could do these things in advance of you reaching out to us. In an ideal world, in most cases, we'll reach out to you. So that'll, you know, fix a step there. But we're influencing our admins by providing them, you know, meaningful data, meaningful tools, meaningful monitoring to be able to really kind of accelerate and create efficiency around uh, support. So we do a lot. Uh, there's there's well over a hundred kind of variations on these tools that we create. Happy to happy to go into detail on all of them, but it's it's really about 
Um, yes, it's about creating tools, about creating monitoring, and, and that therefore influences customer success as well. If you have these tools and you have this efficiency, your response time goes down, your response detail goes up, and your ability to really solve problems for customers is that much quicker. Um, I would also add that freeing of time and that efficiency is, is really a key way in which we've been able to amplify our service. So as an example, if a customer approaches to us, I mean, a very common thing with WooCommerce being that WooCommerce is highly dynamic is that it eats up a lot of CPU resource within the hosting environment. CPU is going to be your bottleneck. CPU is also very expensive. Um, that's how everything is effectively classed in the cloud community um, is you, know, you have a certain level of CPU, you know, you'll get more memory, you'll get outsized storage, you'll be paying for these additional resources that you ultimately don't need. Uh, PHP workers are also kind of couched within that as well. Ultimately, CPU is your, your core resource. Um, do you necessarily need to upgrade the CPU every time you have a slow admin page or a 20-second cart checkout? I mean, the answer is most definitely no. There's a lot of different ways in which certain plugins interact with the cart. You know, for example, are you caching or excluding the right things on various pages? Are you influencing the way in which PHP processes actually run or get completed? Are you creating you know, the right optimizations in the database when you actually need to? I mean, all these things are best addressed by a seasoned system admin who has seen WooCommerce and WordPress and Linux a million times over. Um, it's very difficult to acquire that type of sort of high touch um, in the hosting world for you know, reasons we've already talked about. But being able to reach out to somebody, have those people have tools that have already informed them of these various issues and have the ability to dive deeper into them without necessarily taking support time away from other people um, you know, is, is kind of the recipe to success um, as, as it pertains to customer success. So, I mean, when we originally started talking about you know, customer success and you know, how we're able to deliver on it, it, we've really formed a whole business around it. I mean, you know, between creating tools, you know, owning our own infrastructure, building out our own network. I mean, everything comes down to being able to offer better service, whether it be creating efficiency, you know, opening up margins, whatever it is, it's all coming back and being reinvested into. Mm. So that was an interesting point that you brought up about and how I typically think of customer client success as we've been talking about as I have a problem, so let me reach out to this company that I have a contract with because I need something fixed. Something's broken. So let me. And what you're all mentioning is that, well, of course, yes, that, in addition to uh, we can reach out proactively you know, and, and maybe solve something before it comes a problem. Um, I imagine that there's a there's a couple of potential issues there with like, wait, why are they calling me? Are they just trying to sell me something? Um, like, how do you think about this idea of proactively kind of being this partner in you know their business and helping solve problems before they become problems? without being salesy. Yeah, sometimes it can be tricky. I mean, the hosting piece of it is interesting. So we solve, so I mentioned to you the, the critical, the most critical issue and in, in your bottleneck most typically in all WooCommerce related problems comes down to CPU. If you could have an infinite amount of CPU, it, it almost doesn't matter how poorly your theme interacts with various plugins in your checkout and so forth. But infinite CPU is not realistic. Also, as you scale your CPU into more cores to allow more visitors and more threads to interact with that CPU in the PHP, you're going to end up with a much slower CPU clock speed as well. So it's kind of like an inverse thought process. You upgrade your CPU, but what you're actually ending up with is a slower responding site. Maybe the issue of the actual timeouts gets fixed, but it might take a 10-second load time to a 20-second load time, and that's, that's not what you're looking for. So how do you address this? We have a baseline, so again, kind of all circling back to customer success, but we build and maintain our own infrastructure. We've been infrastructure provider. We haven't talked about this, but we've, we started out as infrastructure providers. We provided off-prem co-location and infrastructure management for uh, companies in the Chicagoland area who, uh, at the time, that predates you know, AWS and Azure and what have you. So we would take what would otherwise be a locally hosted platform, you know, like a hospital or what have you, and it would, we would co-locate it, we'd manage that infrastructure, and we would do it with this sort of enterprise level of service. Saw the writing on the wall and we pivoted towards WordPress because we love WordPress. We love the idea of building, you know, working around folks who actually own and operate these sites and just working in this ecosystem. It's, it's where we want to be. We knew that from 
from day one, we took that enterprise platform and that sort of enterprise sales and service mentality, brought it into WordPress, and that's that's kind of the the you know the starting to our you know customer success story. Um, but owning our own infrastructure and being that infrastructure provider makes us unique, and that's one of the key ways in which we deliver on partic- on WooCommerce in particular is because if you own and operate your own infrastructure, you don't have to deal with let's call it the cloud margin problem where you're getting a three or four x negative return on uh, you know your your CPU resource. So if you're an individual, and and what I mean by that is that if you scale up your, let's call it just an AWS instance for the sake of, of just conversation, what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with a much larger platform with, with resources that you otherwise don't need and perhaps are not optimized to the extent that they otherwise should be. So are your PHP processes optimized, your database is optimized, you know, so on and so forth. If you build out your own platform and you do so with more CPU resources that are more resource efficient, in addition to optimizing the platform itself, like the WordPress environment and WooCommerce, you kind of come at this from a double-edged sword where you optimize the running processes, but you also optimize the actual physical resources themselves. And just having that as a baseline creates a lot of proactive service improvements as well. For example, you know, the sort of the, the, the salesy or marketing numbers that we use is if you were to reduce your footprint from a cloud-based managed WordPress provider to an infrastructure-based cloud based um, managed WordPress provider, you're going to see about three or four times the resources for the same dollar spent. So it's just sort of baked into the model to offer more service-focused improvements, and that just comes through more, more resource efficiency. So there's a lot of proactive services that we can do there, and it's, that's not really salesy or markety. It's just the nature in which our business operates. We've sort of taken what is otherwise a problem to manage the infrastructure. We've taken that burden on ourselves, and we benefit the end-user by providing that to them. We don't charge them more. We don't provide less reliability. We don't take any negatives out of that. We just take that on as a, as a challenge. We offer that, and in turn, it improves the service lifecycle for a customer as well. So I think there's a number of different avenues that you can do that sort of thing in various different industries and ecosystems. You can own a piece of the problem that is otherwise deferred off to a third party or maybe the end user themselves. You improve it, you validate it, you own it for them, and it nets benefits to everybody. I mean, in in in, to, in your case, you get the you get the service wins. So, what I kind of distill that down into is, um, be a partner, like solve problems. You know, like they they've the customer has trusted you with this part of their business, and being a good steward of that trust is that is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I love the word partner. It's what we use all the time. It's what I use. You know, we we expect to be a partner rather than just a service provider. Just, I mean, we we don't want to be the people that you just call. You know, once every twenty four months because your you know credit card expires and you need to update your billing or something. Like, we want to be somebody that you're leaning on regularly, especially in the context of WooCommerce because things are always changing. If you fix a problem with WooCommerce, like a lot of these um, a lot of these websites, these heavy traffic websites that really have a lot of focus on performance. If, if you fix a problem, you could be, you know, just, you know, let's <laughs> kind of turning the dials ever so slightly, uh, you know, a PHP update, um, you know, a plugin update. You know, we have to remember that WooCommerce is a community solution. So every single plugin is created by a different developer that doesn't necessarily, you know, uh, test against other development pipelines. And, you know, PHP updates might, you know, the plugin update might lag behind a PHP update. There could be any number of variety of reasons why, something might fall out of sync again. So just being that partner and just ensuring that you're always there to be helpful is is absolutely critical, for sure. I mean, customer success is not reasonably attainable, a high level of customer success, without meaningful partnership and, and really being invested in your customers. Ah, oh, that's very cool, Scott. Well, I feel like this is a topic that we could just keep talking about for like a, a really long time. We don't have a really long time. We're we're wrapping up, um, getting close to uh, being done here. Uh, before we do, um, if someone, you know, like I said, we, we could keep talking about this. If they wanted to like, hey, want to get in touch with you at, at Big Scoots, I've got more questions. Scott, you said something on the Do The Woo podcast that really sparked my interest. Uh, how, would they, how would they get in touch with you? Me personally, I'm just as available as the rest of our team. 
bottom right hand corner of our website, talk to a human. Hey, I saw Scott. I'd love to talk to him. You'll find me. Uh, separate to that, Scott at BigScoots.com. Always happy to give out my personal email. Uh, I've always been uh, chained to the hip as far as my email and myself <laughs> goes. So if there's anything I can do to, to help answer any questions, regardless of coming over to Big Scoots or not, I mean, I'm just, help, I'm, I'm just very happy to uh, be a part of the community, help where I can, if I can offer any advice or any, 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 any help whatsoever. Very happy to. But uh, I mean, thank you very much for having me on. Always love talking about this stuff. As you can probably guess, pretty passionate about customer success. I mean, that's how we built our whole business. So there's a lot of mistakes that we've made over time. I like to think that we've had enough of a timeline to rectify those mistakes and improve on them quite dramatically. So time has been on our side. Um, you know, we're excited to be here, excited to be in the community. Um, it was awesome to meet you at Cloud. Right, I didn't meet you, but James mentioned about your conversation. That was awesome uh, at CloudFest. So just, just happy to really kind of engage, be more part of the community as much as we can. So just... Just get in touch, reach out. Uh, happy to happy to help if I can. Sounds good, and hopefully we'll be seeing some more uh, big scoots at some of the different uh, WordCamp and CloudFest events that are that are coming up here soon. Yeah, WordCamp US will be there. If anybody else is, yeah. Portland's going to be fun. Yeah, I just got my plane tickets, and uh, it's going to be going to be a good time. Well. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us. This has been another episode of Woo Biz Chat from the Do The Woo Network. Uh, we hope you guys have had a great day and that you learned something. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much.